Hi, this is Christopher Moss from LearnStorage.co.uk and in this module we're going to look at how to install on tap the, the simulator on tap um, and a few other things. So let's just briefly look at what we're going to cover. So the first thing that we're going to look at is how to download the on tap 8 7 mode simulator. Uh, we're going to jump into that right now. Uh, we need you need to have a now account as as has been mentioned a few times already. Uh, but that's just at now.netapp.com. Um, we'll just need to log in and uh, find the download. There's also the simulator license file that's uh, important, which we're going to save to our desktop for future use. So bear with me whilst I log in. Apologies for the resolution, by the way. Uh, it's just uh, it, otherwise the videos will look uh, a bit stretched. So. We need to go to the downloads page and in here um, we have the software and just on the right over here we've got the data on tap simulator and we can just go to simulator 8.x it's always going to be the latest version of the simulator that's available uh, so in this case it's 8.0.1 uh, so we're going to click on um, well the, the, the two options that are available we're interested in the 7 mode so we need to click on that and then we go through accept that and uh, begin the download now I've already downloaded the, the file to my computer so um, it's, it's a relatively big download um, compared to the 7, uh, 7x simulator so I'm not going to really just cover that anyway, but the we do need to take a copy of the vSIM licenses file. So I'm just going to take a copy of that. Oops, whoops. Uh, just Control A, Control C, and we're just going to copy that to the desktop. Let's paste that in there. Okay, so. That's basically downloading the simulator. As I say, I've already downloaded the uh, the simulator files to my machine. Um, just going to very quickly show you that. I've got the the simulator files there. It's 322 meg approx compared to the the old simulators, which were about 80 meg. Um, so you know that gives you the the indication of the size difference. Uh, so with that said we're going to look at extracting the the simulator and we're going to do it twice the reason being that effectively we need two copies of the simulator uh, one for our file one and one for file two um, so the first one we're just going to do extract and it takes about 30 seconds to do an extract um, so I'm just going to quickly pause the video whilst whilst it extracts okay so my simulator is just extracted uh, I'll just very quickly show you that. There's uh, quite a few files in there. All the uh, effectively all the simulator disks come out as a separate file. Um, so we are now going to extract it again, purely for the second simulator. So for that one, we're going to go to Extract Files, and we're going to give this a second name of NetApp Two. And again, I'm just going to pause the video whilst that extracts. So now I have uh, two copies of the same files effectively. Um, it's just basically a blank install file. But to begin with, we're just going to concentrate on this one. And I'm just going to quickly rename that to NetApp1, just for uh, sanity reasons, really. We're going to stick with the naming convention of NetApp1 and NetApp2 for our simulators. Uh, so now I need to go into the VMware. Uh, I'm using Workstation. Um, you can use whichever version of uh, uh, VMware that you you have. There's the free versions, the players, stuff like that. So uh, I, I'm actually using Workstation. I use this tool for other things as well, which is why I'm um, using Workstation, but you can get away with using the freebie or the Mac version. Uh, so I've got a Windows 7 that I've, I've downloaded, which is where I'm running the PowerPoints from. Uh, it's just a Windows 7 uh, eval copy. Um, which you're going to need both in the Windows 7 and uh, Linux VM. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu. Um, just we'll we'll be using the uh, Ubuntu VM for covering the NFS stuff. 
and the majority of it's going to be done from a Windows perspective. So if you're not too comfortable with with Linux, don't worry about that. But um, in the corporate environment or in the enterprise environment, you are going to more than likely come across points where you need to do uh, Linux stuff. So it's good to know the uh, the basics, if nothing else. Okay, so we need to add in our simulator into VMware. Uh, so we just go to File and Open. And we have the NetApp folder. So we're just going to open up NetApp 1. It's going to open up the uh, ONTAP VMX. Now, we differ uh, here from if you've installed the seven mo the uh, ONTAP 7 simulator, any of the seven releases, um, you'll know that you had to have a, a Linux VM already built and then you had to have um, the simulator as a separate file which you'd copied in. So effectively you were running a simulator inside a VM on your machine. So the resources uh, utilization was, was higher, the overall build time was higher, um, and generally it's a bit more streamlined now on the on the simulator. So um, with that said, I'm just going to show you very quickly um, some quick things that we need to do to make this simulator work properly. Uh, so I'm just going to go to Edit Virtual Machine Settings and just double check. Yep, we need to change this to NetApp 1. And we then need to make sure our, net, our network adapters are set to bridged. Otherwise, uh, your filer won't get a connectivity to the network. So just make sure that one's gone through. Yep. Okay. And with that said, let's just very quickly look at our, uh, our PowerPoints. So we've changed our, our settings for simulator use. Uh, we're going to need to do that again on the second simulator. So we might as well add that in now. Let's go to file and open. Jump over to the NetApp directory, NetApp 2. So effectively we've got two copies and that's why we're we're renaming one uh, or renaming them both so that we don't lose our, our minds a bit later on. So I'll just name this one NetApp 2. Hardware, make sure that our network adapters are set to bridged. Okay. But for now we're just going to stick with NetApp 1. So at this point, um, we're going to run through the simulator setup. So we just power it on. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is click in when it's finished doing its VMware bit. Click in so that the mouse disappears. And relatively quickly, we're going to need to press Control c to get to the boot menu. Just press Enter there. Uh, any other key is going to take you to a loader prompt at that point, um, which you're going to need for the, set the setup of the second simulator in the, uh, in the near future. So press Control c when it prompts, when it prompts us. And it was just going to have a think about it, and then it's going to present us with a um, list of eight options. Uh, so the option that we need is option four, which is clean config and initialize all disks. And in terms of whether you have to sit here and actually watch it, uh, unfortunately, um, there are a couple of points where you do need to do a bit of, of entry. And the first one comes up relatively quickly, and then the second one will come up um, a couple of minutes later. Uh, and then after that, there's there's some more config as well. But zero disks, reset config, yep. Just want to press Y there, and again, Y there as well. So it goes through now, and the next point when, it, when it'll start up is actually when it's asking us for host names and interface uh, addresses and stuff like that. So I'm going to pause the video here because uh, you're going to have to sit here and watch this on your own system if you're running through, and there's no point making you watch it more than, more than you have to. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to pause the video at this point. So we now need to enter the host name for our filer, and as we know, we're going to be calling this um, NetApp one. And then it's going to ask us about interface groups. At this point, we're going to say no to that. Uh, do you want to configure IP addresses for network interface zero uh, e zero a? So we're going to give this um, 192.168.0.131, and we're just going to go one three one through one three four. Default network mask is fine. Um, we're going to accept the uh, media type automatically. Uh, flow control, leave that as default too. Jumbo frames at this point, we're saying no. And then we need to go through uh, the same setup for the other three interfaces. So you can just press up there on the keyboard and just accept that. And again. And lastly, one, three, four. 
no, we don't want to continue through the web interface. Uh, that we need to make sure that we get our default gateway right. Sometimes it will come up with the wrong address, uh, but in this case, it's got the correct one. So just make sure that you don't uh, hit too many enter keys there. Um, otherwise, you'll potentially not be able to connect to your file remotely to begin with. Uh, so enter the name of the IP address of the admin host. We're leaving that blank. Time zones GMT. Where's the file located? It's in data center one. You want to run a DNS resolver? No. NIS client? No. And we're just going to keep going. No. And we need to put a root password in. Now, oh, just a, a very quick one on ONTAP8. If you try and do um, a relatively basic password, uh, it will give you an error. Whereas this uh, wasn't a case in the previous release. So I'll put my password in and then it's going to go off and uh, calculate this this checksum. This again takes maybe five minutes depending on, on the uh, processing speed and, and disk speed and so on of your machine. Uh, I believe if you're running the simulator off a uh, SSD or a flash, flash disk effectively, you're going to get a lot greater speed. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not. I'm running off quite a, a relatively low speed uh, SATA disk. But... At this point, again, I'm going to pause the video because, again, you're going to have to sit through and watch this, and there's no point in watching it more than you have to.